about you, but I am a very nostalgic person. When I love something, when something gives me a good memory, when I feel emotionally connected to something, I just, I want to talk about it. I can't let it go. It just gives me all the feels, all the happiness, all the joy. And one of the things in my life that brings me a lot of joy or eyeshadow palettes. I just love collecting colors. I like looking at the palette and then seeing how I can bring the colors from the palette to life on my eyes. I love experimenting and playing and it's just straight up fun. So today I wanna go over with you 10 of my favorite eyeshadow palettes of all time. I have hundreds, literally hundreds of eyeshadow palettes, and I've narrowed it down to 10 that I want to share with you today. So if you want to see what I picked and you want to go down memory lane with me, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. First disclaimer is that some of these are not available anymore. I didn't put many qualifiers on here as far as what I could pick, what I couldn't pick. I really just wanted a variety of brands. That was kind of the only thing. Like I had a couple of ColourPop palettes that were kind of in the running and I was like, you know what? I only really want to use, oh, let's talk about one. <laughs> Let's just pick one, because I do have quite a few of them that I've enjoyed over the years. This isn't a countdown format. I can't count, like I can't count from 10 to one because I don't have a favorite amongst these because I like them for different reasons. It's like choosing between children. I love all of these palettes. One thing you're going to notice about these eyeshadow palettes is even though they are my favorite palettes, none of them have, I haven't hit pan on a single one of them. I don't think I've ever hit pan on a single eyeshadow palette. And the reason why is because of my job because I'm constantly trying new things and it doesn't give me a lot of time to spend on just loving the things that I have. So I use these on the occasional day off or I'll use them for a Sunday live stream or something like that. Um, I'll reach into them occasionally, but I'm always trying to give you new information. So that's why I they don't look as loved as they would if a typical person that didn't have this as a job were showing them to you. If I didn't have this as a job. I'm sure I would have hit pan on many of these eyeshadow palettes. So let's get started with the newest ones that I've added to my collection more recently, the ones that are more available, and then we'll get into some memory lane stuff. So let's talk first about the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette. I honestly wasn't sure how I was going to like this. I was a little bit nervous about buying it just because the price point is so high and it has like this weird shade in here that's like kind of jelly-like and kind of chunky and I didn't know what was going to happen with that and I was just like eh, do I really want to invest in this and I am so freaking thankful that I bought this. I love the color story on this and I love some of the super unique shades that they've got going on here that I don't have anywhere else and that's really hard for me <laughs> to come to an eyeshadow palette and not have, so have something in here that I don't have anywhere else. Like for example this shade right here I think is absolutely gorgeous. It is so pretty. I love the duochromes. I'm a big duochrome fan. I love the duochromes in here but I also love how easy the mattes are to work with. They're just... Fluffy, but not too fluffy. You know, they don't create a lot of fallout on the face, which I personally really love. And I just love the color combinations I can come up with this. They're not super varied, meaning, you know, it's relatively monochromatic going on in here, but the level of depth and the complexity can vary depending on what shades I use. And that's one of the big reasons why I absolutely love this palette. Second palette that is still available is the That's Taupe palette by ColourPop. And I never would have purchased this, never in a million years, but this was part of the Allie Glines collection. And I had just started watching Allie Glines when this came out. And I was excited to support her and try products that she felt like worked really well for her. And this, this is such a good base product. When I am not wanting to think about <laughs> what I want to do with my eyes, this is a great palette to reach for. It's the same to traditional wonderful ColourPop formula that I personally really love. There isn't a lot of complexity in here like there is with the Rose Quartz palette, but like the Rose Quartz palette, it's relatively monochromatic. There really isn't a whole lot of variation you can do. It's more choosing the depth that you want to go to, but I just love the way these colors look on my skin. I think that they're really pretty, and I think you can just create 
pretty looks that aren't super complicated. And I think there's a place for that in my life too. The next palette is one that I have an extreme sentimental, emotional attachment to, but I loved it even before I knew the person that designed it. This is the Tiny Marvels palette with Sydney Grace and Mel Thompson. And if you do are not familiar with Mel, you can still go over and watch her channel. She did pass away a little over a year ago. She was a friend of mine and I got to know her after my review of this product, which of course was a glowing review because it's a fantastic palette. This one is just so fun in the color story. One of my favorite shades I think of all time is gonna be Fire Butts. I, for whatever reason, this one just hits me in the spot, you know? It's like, Ha! Ah, like it just gets you, it just gets you. It's so freaking beautiful. I'm also very attached to the shade Jewel Bee because this is my favorite shade of purple. It's like true lavender-y, you know, but not too pale kind of purple, love it. This is still available on the Sydney Grace website and some of the profits from this, the commissions from it still go to Mel's family, which I think is fantastic. Another natural palette that I love, this is the Essentials palette by Stephanie Lang. I'm not connected with Stephanie Lang at all. I've never spoken to her, I don't know her at all, but she created a heck of a palette with Sigma. This is a fun, fun palette. And unlike the other natural palettes I've showed you, this one has a lot more variation in it. It has a lot more you can do with it as far as the depth and the creativity that you can do with this. It's also the most warm palette that I've showed you so far. Far. It is just a high quality, easy to use, but also very fun palette. It's natural, but you can also get some really beautiful, colorful kinds of looks in here. It doesn't stray so far into the color territory, but it's just enough for people that might be trying to inch their way into more vibrant colors, but without pushing it so, so far, especially if you have a warm skin tone. Favorite shade in here is definitely Star. I love this one so much. It is just, it's not quite as foiled. It's more of a satin, shiny satin metallic finish rather than a foiled finish. It's not as chunky. It's not as thick of a finish, but it's so incredibly beautiful. I just looked up and found out that this is still available as well if you're interested in it. Even though this palette is very old, <laughs> it's very loved and it is still available. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold Palette. And I got this... I feel like this came out kind of the end of the big Too Faced boom. Like I remember seeing sneaks of Jackie Ina swatching this because she had been working with uh, with Too Faced with their foundation line. And I remember there was like a there was like a big table and all the executives were there and Jackie Ina had the palette and was swatching it and stuff. And I remember being so excited about this coming out. And when I got it, I loved it so much. This is definitely my favorite Too Faced palette of all time. It smells like chocolate. As soon as as I open it, it just reminds me of Hershey Park in Pennsylvania when you go on the chocolate ride. If you've ever gone to Hershey Park in Pennsylvania, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't and you're ever in the area, you should go there. It is a fantastic theme park. But anyway, this smells like that theme park when you go into this chocolate ride where they teach you about how they make chocolate and stuff. Hershey's the sweetest place on earth. Okay, that's enough of that. But the shades in here, I remember getting them and just being like, oh my gosh, these are just bringing me so much joy. I remember this purple one really loving, I haven't used it in a while, really loving the purple, really loving this gold and really loving this green. And those are, oh my gosh, it's Mardi Gras on my fingers. <laughs> this would make a beautiful Mardi Gras look, wouldn't it? But I also love that they did this corner of like natural mats in here so you can kind of set up the look if you want to and then just throw on one or two of the more foiled shades. And I still really, really love this palette. I haven't used it in a long time, I'm gonna be honest with you, because it is kind of old and it's like sketching me out a little bit. Uh, and also what I said in the beginning as far as not being able to use a lot of these palettes all the time, but I do still have a special place in my heart for this palette. This next one I don't think is available anymore, but it is so beloved and I do have a very special place in my heart for it. This is the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. I believe this was Colored Rain's first eyeshadow palette. And I remember when I purchased this and tried it, I was just absolutely blown away by how just creamy the shadows were, how easy it was to work with and how much 
fun I had playing with this. Let me just swatch a few of them. I do want to swatch some mats for you. So let's swatch Royal Highness. Let's swatch Duchess. And let's swatch, uh, I remember Ladyship is a little bit chunky. So let's swatch Royal Prerogative. And you can kind of see, you can create a more natural look there, or you can go in and create a more colorful look. So let's do Noblewoman, Empress, and Queen Mother. And those are just so, so incredibly fun. Now this one is pretty warm for my skin tone. So I didn't tend to reach for the more like the orange shade as much, but I played a lot in the purples and the browns on this and really had so much fun with it. And it's kind of like, this was when I really started loving eyeshadow. When I really started finding joy was when I found this palette and some of the other palettes from around that time. Speaking of joy, let us talk about friendship in the YouTube space because honestly, like when I see somebody that I've met in person that I really enjoy their content and I see them doing great things, I get so, so excited. And then when I get a product that they've created with a brand, like I know it's going to be good, but then there's like the back of my mind thinking, what am I going to say if this product sucks? What am I going to do? And thankfully, that was not the case in here. And I, I trusted Raw Beauty Christie to do a really good job on this palette. This is the Pure and Raw Beauty Christie palette. And I, I don't know how this came about. And I don't know why this was so good. But it just was because before this came out, I kind of had a negative feeling about Pure in my heart in that everything I tried from Pure was just okay to, I'm not sure if I really like this at all, but this, this was a standout product. And I honestly haven't heard a ton about Pure since then, which is kind of odd because this was a huge hit for them. This is a two-sided palette. So you have more natural shades here. And then when you flip it around, you have a bright colorful side. Now, I will be honest with you, I did not play in the colorful side hardly at all because these colors terrify me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be 100% with you. This shade was really fun though. Like this one's a good one, but I mostly, you can tell I mostly played in this side and the shades just go on so seamlessly. And as somebody that isn't super skilled at makeup, I'm not a makeup artist. I'm just a makeup enthusiast. I appreciate a palette like this being so blendable and that the shades really seamlessly go into each other. I'm just going to swatch a few of them here of these bottom row. And it's just, they're just beautiful the way that they go on the eye. And I really love this one called Moo Point. But you can tell that Christy has an artistic eye by just the way that this was designed, having this peach shade and then like a mustard shade and then like a rust shade. Like how do you even think of putting these together? I never would have put this color story together. But when you put it on the eye, it just works. It just works. And like, I just, I appreciated that so much. And of course, very excited for Christy when she came out with this. She did come out with this one as well. This is the At Forest site by ColourPop, which of course I also very much loved and worked with a lot and had a lot of fun with. I kind of like them evenly to be completely honest with you, but because I didn't have a pure palette, I threw this one in just by elimination in that way. But, but Christy did such a wonderful job and this palette just brought me so much joy. We have three more palettes left to go. And this next one is going to be the most controversial one and I I can't I can't not include this like no matter how I feel I can't not include this palette because I have a serious emotional attachment to this palette I'm not going to say anything else but it's this one this is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette the original one and when I got this I was so excited to review it because I knew that it was such a big deal to everybody in the community and it was a big deal to me to have this palette now when they first sent it out this is a funny story so they sent it out with this card here that has all the shade names on it instead of putting the shade names on the back like they typically do with a lot of eyeshadow palettes. Uh, so Robbie Christie actually had taped this up here onto her palette. And I was like, that's such a great idea. So I did the same thing. And I will tell you, I brought this eyeshadow palette to so many events that I was going to back when this launched. I brought it everywhere with me. This is not a travel palette <laughs> by any means, but this went with me everywhere. I think that year I went to like four different Generation Beauties by Ipsy. Like I brought it 
everywhere with me. Now looking back on it and like thinking about this, there are so many shades in here that are almost dupes of each other that it's like, it is a traditional Morphe palette, I think in the color selection, if you just take this corner out, it really isn't that exciting in color selection. But at the time I was blown away by it. Like I remember this shade right here, Sissy, like loving that one. I remember, what else did I love and die over? This one here, Buns, I remember using a lot my hands are like hold on a minute, let me wipe my hands better because I'm like my hands are so dirty at this point maybe I'll get like an actual makeup wipe maybe that'll help somebody asked in the comments the other day they were like Jen why do you use a dry paper towel instead of a makeup wipe and it's like because paper towels are cheaper <laughs> more easy to like keep out like I just keep my roll of paper towels I don't have to I don't know I just I just find it easier to use paper towels I don't know it does make more sense to use a makeup remover wipe though it genuinely does all right back to the Jaclyn Hill palette so let me swatch these again this is sissy this one is called buns and they're just you can tell it's different. You can tell it's a different formula than the regular Morphe formula. Like it just has a different feel to it. And then this one here, Hillster, I remember really loving. It just has like an like a like a creaminess to it that we didn't get in Morphe palettes at that time period. I don't think we still get it in Morphe palettes. And then if you know the story, uh, I believe, in my opinion, they changed labs. And now with all this stuff coming out with Morphe and and all of that, I do think that they must have changed labs and that's why they had this wonderful formula and then changed it to something else uh, there was a whole drama around it where this one was vegan the new one is not vegan it has carmine in it uh, and it was it was a mess it was such a mess so it just kills me that they didn't keep this because I think if they churned out this quality if they were able to keep this quality I genuinely believe Morphe wouldn't be in as bad of a shape as they are now because this was a really good palette. No matter how I feel about Jaclyn, no matter how I feel about Morphe, this was a damn good palette. This is another one I'm not the biggest fan of the brand as a whole, but I have to admit, this is a fantastic palette. This is the Sultry Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I have used this and loved this so many times. There's been so many times over the years, because this is way older than a lot of these here, where I've been like, I don't know what I want to do with my eye look. And I grab this because it is easy. It matches with my entire wardrobe pretty much. I can create something from this. Most love shades in here are probably Cinder and Pearl and rose quartz and we'll talk about uh we'll do a matte one let's do dystopian uh and they're just pretty they're just pretty i don't know what else to say they work really well they go on very easily just like every palette i've showed you they just are good quality and i love the color selection i love that i can take it to a pink way or i can take it to a bronze or i can take it to more gold or i can take it to just a natural matte look there's so much that i can do with this and i feel like abh should re-release this I really genuinely do. It is a fantastic, fantastic eyeshadow palette. Before I show you the very last palette that is no longer available, I just wanna give an honorable mention to the Makeup Geek Matrix palette. Marlena is a friend of mine and I absolutely adore her and she really knocked it out of the park with these Matrix palettes. Now I cannot find my natural palette. That would have been the one that I showed you because that was the one that had my heart. This is the one that was all of the colors and I do still use this occasionally, but. It was that natural one that really I felt like just stole my heart. It was such a good formula. Uh, and I am so sad that Makeup Geek is no more because she was the first influencer brand. She was the first person to really step out of the box and say, you know what? I'm starting a cosmetic company as a makeup artist and as an influencer. And she started so many things. Makeup Geek was one of the first companies to give out affiliate codes. Revolutionary in her thinking and her business mindset and and I just appreciate her, not just as a business person, but as a human. I just admire her so much and I admire everything she was able to accomplish with that brand. And more importantly, specifically for this video, the formulas that she created. She created an amazing eyeshadow formula that wasn't out of the box, expensive, and also made in the USA. Like that is relatively unheard of, especially when you don't have your own personal lab that you own. I mean, she just did such amazing things. And I just wanted to give that a quick shout out. It would have been in the countdown, the natural one, but I 
honestly can't find it. I have no idea where it is. So finally, last palette that I wanted to show you today is my Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals palette and this was sent in PR. The Makeup Geek was sent in PR as well but I think everything else I've mentioned whether it was PR or purchased but this my friend another thing that breaks my heart that we will not get another Tati Beauty eyeshadow palette. This was so fun and so groundbreaking as far as the different finishes and how she broke it down. You can just tell that she understands how makeup works and how makeup works for the average user in that it's only the five shades, right? But then you have the four different finishes on the five shades. So you can just play in there. And I was really looking forward to seeing more palettes like this with different color stories. And I'm just so sad that that isn't going to happen. I'm hoping that one day, one day some version of Tati Beauty will come back. Uh, I feel like it should exist. I feel like Tati did such a nice job with the things that she was able to launch and it just makes me so sad. Let me go ahead and swatch a couple of my favorite shades. So let's, uh, this sequin shade is what she called it, called Poet. Look at that. Oh my gosh. On my, This is what I'm wearing on my eyes today, by the way. I am wearing Ritual, the uh, the metallic shade there. I'm wearing these two rows pretty much. Like these guys over here is what I'm wearing on my eyes today. Let me swatch one of these, these up here just so you can see the formula. Just so fun, really fun to play with. And I think that what Tati did that was different than a lot of people is I think that Tati knew the joy of makeup and I think she understood that and then she infused that into her eyeshadow palette. This is a little bit of a side note, but I wanted to tell you about it just because it has to do with this palette. But I purchased this a while ago and just never used it. This is from Pleasing, at Terry Styles makeup line and nail polish line. It is from the Marco Ribeiro collection and it is a gloss medium and I wanted to play with this today so I did and really what it is is it's a very thick gloss formula and then what I did was I put a little dob of dollop of this on the back of my hand and then I used this shade right here the metallic ritual shade and that's my lipstick today that's what I'm wearing. And I just had so much fun with that. So I'm gonna be playing with this more. It's just a nice way to match my eyeshadow to my lips without doing any extra work. And it worked beautifully. Like it was fantastic. So I don't know, I'm trying to figure out at this point whether this is better or any different than using just a plain lip gloss, but I'm gonna keep playing with it and I'll keep you posted and let you know. So that my friend was my 10 eyeshadow palettes that are my favorite of all time. How did I do? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments down below. What would you have included that I didn't include? Did you think I made a mistake in including something? Let me know. Love to know your thoughts. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it so much that you want to hit the thumbs up button, that would be great. If you enjoyed it even more than that and you want to hang out a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch, including one that I picked out for you special. It's right down at the bottom. YouTube picked the top one for you. But if you do have to go, it is no problem at all. Totally get it. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. Mad love to you. I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye!